So as I said, we've come a long, we've, when you consider the last two jumps, we've come a long way culturally. Um, this is, of course, one of the Met's most famous uh, pieces. This is a portrait of Gertrude Stein by Pablo Picasso. Uh, now, uh, I always find, have a hard time introducing Gertrude Stein. Uh, Gertrude Stein was an experimental author of the 1920s, but nobody really reads Gertrude Stein anymore on the whole. I think um, sometimes the autobiography of Alice Pito plus gets read, which is one of her books. But mostly people just know her for a couple of lines now. You always hear people repeating, rose is a rose is a rose. And also she said of Oakland, California, there was no there there, which is clever, it's very clever. Um, unfortunately, she was not, clever was not her strong side, so um, at least as a writer. Uh, what Gertrude Stein, the reason we remember her, I think, actually is that she was a kind of cultural trendsetter. Uh, she, and she was quite wealthy. She and her brothers were the children of a Pittsburgh, I can never remember if it's iron or steel, one of those, um, manufacturing uh, family. And uh, they went to Europe and collected art. Um, now, they weren't really gigantic wealthy collectors like the Morgans or something, but they, were, they collected what we would call hipsters. And so it was a lot cheaper. And they made the careers of many important painters, like Picasso and Matisse. Uh, Stein also ran uh, part of the same activity, I guess, is that she ran a kind of literary artistic salon. Uh, and um, particularly in the 1920s, her salon attracted the so-called lost generation. So people like Hemingway, Fitzgerald, Dos Passos were all at, at the uh, Stein salon a lot. Um, now, Think about this for a minute. Yeah. Pablo Picasso and Ernest Hemingway. Let's just ponder them for a second. They have a lot in common, actually. Particularly if we think of them in a somewhat unflattering life. What were they like? Pardon? Philanderers. They're philanderers, right? That's one good thing that they were. They were also alcoholics. alcoholics. They were also alcoholics. How do they rate, relate to, um, well, let's just say in the 1960s, we would have called them macho pigs, right? That's <laughs> right. The thing you would call Picasso and Hemingway. So you have to think that their relationship to this woman who had made them was complicated. It's a, it's a difficult relationship. And I think that that's symbolized in this portrait where um, Gertrude Stein looks like the word no. <laughs> it's like welling up from her soul. Uh, Hemingway calls her a woman with a head like Caesar. And I always think, you know, Picasso has portrayed that very same woman. Um, and um, in fact, what's really interesting to me about the portrait is that she didn't really look like that. Uh, this is how we remember her. It's really the image people have of her, and that's what she wanted. She loved the painting, and she donated it to the Metropolitan. So, um, but, um, in fact, Stein was less shapely. She's really, what we would now say large. She was very large. And she also had a more, a, she was a friendlier facial expression than this. And she didn't sit with her hands like this. <laughs> I mean, look at those hand gestures. Could, you know, is she about to say, draw? Perhaps also because she was a lesbian, which might not have been easy for Picasso to swallow either. Uh, you know, her wife, you would have to call her, Alice Pito, because was sitting in the room knitting through the 90 sittings. I'm not joking. <laughs> 90 sittings. Um, so anyway, that's a, a spectacular example of a, of a powerful woman, very powerful woman in the culture of the early 20th century, portrayed as such. Whether that's meant as complimentary or not, 